Topic is 1.5 absolute value, and we're looking at pages 35 to 47 in the text. Our curriculum outcome is none or all, depending on how you look at things, once again. And our lesson objectives, the first, to learn the formal definition of absolute value. Second, to use the concept of the formal definition of the absolute value and something called an expression analysis to combine absolute value expressions. And third, to be able to solve equalities and inequalities of absolute values. So recall that when we take the absolute value of a number, the answer is always positive. So if it was something like the absolute value of negative two, your answer was always positive two. If it was the absolute value of four, your answer was still four. So that's just the concept of absolute value. But what happens when we remove the absolute value sign from a variable? For example, when absolute value of x equals three, well, there's two different things that could have been inside these brackets, inside this the, the absolute value brackets. And that was a three, so x would equal three, but x would also equal negative three, because if you take the absolute value of negative three, you also get three. So you have to remember that there's always gonna be two possible answers. And this leads us to the formal definition of the absolute value, where if we have the absolute value of something, it is equal to the positive of, of that something if b is greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero, and it's equal to the negative of that something if b happens to be less than zero. So for example, we're going to write the absolute value of x minus 5 by using the definition of absolute value. So the absolute value of x minus 5 is equal to a positive x minus 5 if x happens to be greater than or equal to 5. And it'll be the negative uh, version of x minus 5 if x happens to be less than 5. So using an expression analysis. So an expression analysis is like a sign analysis. And this time we're looking for where the entire expression is positive and negative. So for example, if we're looking for the absolute value of x plus 3, um, we could do this on a number line. This would be our key value. Our key value here would be whatever makes it think this thing equal to 0. That's negative 3. So basically, this expression is positive on the right-hand side of negative 3, and it's going to be a negative x plus 3 on the left-hand side. So it's like a side analysis, but we're really looking at the entire expression. So we use an expression analysis so we can organize information before doing operations with absolute value. So for example, we're going to find out what the absolute value of x minus 1 plus the absolute value of x plus 5 is. And to do that, we're going to do the same expression analysis, but we're going to use two different numbers. We're going to use the positive 1 for our first one. And so we know that on the right-hand side, it's going to be a positive x minus 1 from here to here. And over here, it's going to be a negative x minus 1. And for the x plus 5, if we have a negative 5 value over here, on the right-hand side, it's going to be a positive x plus 5. But on the left-hand side, it's going to be a negative x plus 5. So hopefully you can see right now that it's really divided itself up into three different intervals. There's anything from z, uh, negative infinity to negative 5. You're going to have a negative x plus 5 and a negative x minus 1. In between negative 5 and 1, you're going to have a positive x plus 5, but a negative x minus 1. And anything to the right of 1, you're going to have a positive x plus 5 and a positive x minus 1. So when you're done this, this whole expression, you actually get three different answers. So in the first case, so we would write that as x minus 1, absolute value, plus x plus 5, absolute value, is equal to, we're going to get three different answers. When we add these two things together, so that's negative x and negative x is negative 2x. And negative 5 and positive 1 is negative 4. And that's if x happens to be less than or equal to negative 5. Now in between negative 5 and 1 is where we have a positive x plus 5 and a negative x minus 1. So we have positive x and negative x. That cancels out positive 5 and positive 1. And that just equals 6. And that's if x happens to be between negative 5 and 1. And notice that if I use an equal sign with this inequality, we can't use equal signs with this inequality. And finally, our last little interval is x positive x plus 5 and a positive x minus 1. So that's 2x plus 4. And that's if x happens to be greater than or equal to 1. Now, if you wanted to, you could also use interval notation here. So instead of x minus 1, uh, sorry, x is less than negative 5, you could go negative infinity to negative 5. And that negative 5 would have a square bracket because there's an equal sign. 
you could do negative five to one for this one, and then you could also do from one to positive infinity. And you may see these answers written that way in the textbook. So we also need to solve equations with absolute value, and we've done this before in pre-calc, but when you're solving equations with absolute value signs in them, your best bet is to first isolate the absolute value and then create two separate equations to solve. So for example, we have the absolute value of x squared plus 4x is equal to 3. It, the absolute value has already been isolated, so now we can just uh, create two equations. One of those equations is going to have a, a positive 3 over here, and one of those equations is going to have a negative 3 over here. So now, really, you just have to solve these two um, quadratics. So in the first case, we have x squared plus 4x minus 3 equals 0. In the second case, we have x squared plus 4x plus 3 equals 0. So here we're looking for two things that multiply to negative 3 but add to positive 4, and we can't really find that. So we'll have to use the quadratic formula. So you could use the quadratic formula to find those answers. But over here, it's something that we can factor. It would be x plus 1 and x plus 3. So we actually get x equals negative 1, and we get x equals negative 3, and then whatever the two answers here are. So the next thing we're going to look at is inequality properties of absolute value. So our first one says if we have the absolute value of something and it's less than b, then when we remove this absolute value sign, it's still going to be less than b, but it's also going to be greater than negative b. And our second one is kind of just the opposite. If we have the absolute value of something and that's greater than b, then when we remove that absolute value sign, it's still greater than b, but it's also going to be less than negative b. So we have two examples here that we're going to solve. It says absolute value of 5x plus 4 is less than 11. So if you're comfortable with um, making a double inequality, this might save you a little bit of time. So the 5x plus 4 is going to be less than 11, but the 5x plus 4 is greater than negative 11. We subtract 4 from everything. We get negative 15. We get 5x. And we get 7. And we divide by 5, so we get negative 3 and x and 7 over 5. So any value between negative 3 and 7 over 5, if we plug it into this equation, is going to give us something that's going to be less than or equal to 11. And we can write that in interval notation as well uh, with just two square brackets. And so everything from negative 3 to 7 over 5. So our second example is absolute value of 23 minus x is greater than 4. Again, we can make a double inequality. We just have to make sure that we don't make a mistake and write down the wrong sign going the wrong direction. So this whole thing is going to be greater than 4, but it's also going to be less than negative 4. Now to solve this thing, I'm going to subtract 23 from both sides. So this becomes negative 27, and that is negative x now. If I subtract 23 from here, I get negative 19. Now I can divide everything by negative 1, but when I do that, you have to remember that these um, signs also switch whenever you divide anything by negative 1 with inequalities. So this now becomes 27 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 19. Now this doesn't make a whole lot of sense the way it's written because normally this uh, number over here would be the smaller of the numbers. But this says that x is going to be greater than 27, but x is also less than 19. So if we're to write that in um, interval notation, we would write it in this way. So everything from negative infinity to 19, because x is less than 19, or everything that's greater than 27. So we actually have two different intervals that we can write with the uh, union of those two intervals. So in summary, the formal definition of absolute value is that the absolute value of b is equal to b, if b happened to be equal, equal uh, greater than or equal to 0, sorry, and it's going to be equal to negative b if b happens to be less than 0. And we can use this definition along with an expression analysis, this is a big thing, to help us perform operations with absolute value. Now, we only did an adding one, but you could do a, a dividing or a multiplying or subtracting or whatever. Um, but the expression analysis is key. Remember when solving equations with absolute value to isolate the absolute value and then make two equations, one positive and one negative. And that there are two properties to follow when solving absolute value inequalities. First, if that absolute value is less than um, a number, then when you remove the sign, it's going to be less than that number, but it's going to be greater than the negative of that number. And secondly, if it's already greater than b, then when you, you remove the absolute value, um, it's going to stay greater than b, but it's also going to be less than negative b. And finally, your assignment on pages 46 to 47, you could do anything between 17 and 36, 43 to 57, and 63 to 66. Good luck and see you in class.